Alexandra Palace, England. Dance legends Faithless are on tour to promote their new remix album, celebrating 20 years of global success. For anyone working in the music industry, it's been two decades of upheaval. The digital revolution has transformed how we all consume music. But one thing has been slow to change. The business model. If someone makes a record for a major label, the label still owns the record. The only thing it's comparable to is if you take out a mortgage to buy a house and you pay back the bank and then the bank owns your house. But there's a new disruptive voice in the industry that's getting louder. It's from a tech startup called Cobalt and they're using the same digital revolution to rewrite the rules. I have never liked bullies. I don't see why bullies should walk around and make other people's lives bad. We're taking on the big boys. And we've said to people, you can be the masters of your own destiny. Across the world, old industries are facing disruption on an unprecedented scale. People are not taking our taxes. Confronted by ever-changing technology, the pressure to adapt has never been greater. It is always survival of the fittest. That's capitalism. Because where there's threat, there's also opportunity. In the music industry, it's always been survival of the fittest. After decades of technological change, Today, just three major record labels own well over half of the Western world's music. It's a ruthless business, the music business. It's a very tough business to succeed in. The biggest label of them all is Universal. Nick Raphael runs their UK imprint of Capitol Records and has helped sustain their success by investing heavily in new talent, like Grammy Award winner Sam Smith. The most important thing for a record company is to find talent and to find repertoire, you know, the A&R process. And it doesn't matter whether we're in streaming, downloading, 78s, cassettes, uh, vinyl or CDs. It doesn't matter what era we're in. The truth is the way Capitol Records succeeded is by signing and having great artists. And we invest millions upon millions find the next superstar, trying to find the next brilliant artist, trying to find your wedding song. Not that we're trying to find it as your wedding song, but ultimately the songs that will make the soundtrack to your lives. That soundtrack may have been created by the artists, but it's the labels who retain the rights to the music. We make all the investment in terms of skill set and money, right, and we take the risk. It's a model that some artists have been questioning for years, including one of the biggest rock bands on the planet, Radiohead. Artist contracts were so heavily weighted in favour of the record companies. It was just hugely unfair, you know. And I don't think anyone, anyone in, any, in the record companies or anything would dispute that. They might put their head on and go, well, you know what, we've put lots of investment. Yeah, you have, but you know, let's talk about, uh, you know, something that's truly fair. Let's just see it for what it is. You know, we, we didn't have a choice. We wanted to make music. The rapid rise of digital music gave Radiohead an opportunity to challenge the status quo. At the end of their contract with label EMI in 2007, they released their new album, In Rainbows, over the internet themselves. And they allowed fans to pay whatever they liked. There was a cover of Music Week which had the figure of a penny, I think, on the, uh, on the front. Uh, so, look, you know what, if you're in the camp of being excited by innovation and change, then you loved it, you know, clearly within the recorded music business there's a lot of people who, who are not that way and are still not that way, so that kind of change is, is a little bit of a threat. Radiohead's pioneering move proved a critical and commercial success. 
In Rainbows earned them more digital income than all their other albums combined and stunned the entire industry. That resonates today, you know, we were, there's a, that you, you speak to a lot of, you know, well-established acts, they will quote back that thing of, wow, if radio can go and do that, then you know what, a bunch of us can too. While Radiohead were publicly challenging the music establishment, a small technology company was busy behind the scenes, developing a system that would enable more artists and writers a traditional industry model. Cobalt is the brainchild of Swedish musician and entrepreneur Willard Ardritz. The old model is on the way out, so I'm building the new music industry structure. Cobalt has a big mission. It's simple, but it's a big mission to take the music industry into the digital age with transparency and trust. We wanted to make everything transparent and open and fair, which doesn't sound like a big thing, but in the music industry, that's quite a revolution. Cobalt's opportunity came when music downloads started to give way to a proliferation of streaming sites like Deezer and Spotify. For artists, it was becoming virtually impossible to keep track of who was consuming their music. Cobalt was one step ahead of the industry with its technology and the appealing prospect it offered artists of getting paid. Suddenly, here's a company that actually going to tell you what you're earning, help you earn more money, uh, help you earn your own money quicker and handle those billions of transactions from billions of different sources and, and pile them all up and make sure that the writer got paid every little, you know, percentage of a cent they should have been paid. Cobalt now represents over 8,000 artists and songwriters, and the technology has been embraced by some of the biggest names in the industry, including multi-million album selling band, Snow Patrol. So we're just gonna be on this Not right. only does Cobalt's system monitor every digital download of a song, Make yourself comfortable. but it's able to collect the tiny micropayments artists and writers get from every play on a streaming site. So, Dan, with the Snow Patrol record, Fallen Empires, is, uh, what's the biggest performance song? Do you think is it would have been New York? Or? I think it is, yeah. We can have a look on the report. Um, we definitely kept in the dark. Before, this is very transparent, very easy to understand. They've been able to collect money that no one else has been able to see through their, their software. And so we've seen 23% more income on, uh, on a song through Cobalt. Today, Cobalt has a global turnover of nearly a quarter of a billion dollars and the confidence to take its revolution to the next level. The company now wants to challenge the entire structure of the industry by taking on the vexed issue of music ownership. Four years ago, Cobalt started offering services to help artists record and distribute their music, similar to a record company. But unlike a record company, Cobalt lets the artists retain the rights to the music. They simply charge them fees for the services the artists want them to provide. Really good, loads of energy. I think it's ready to go, it sounds perfect to me. That whole idea of owning your own record and getting someone to market and distribute it for you is the biggest threat to traditional major record labels. We've said to people, you can be the masters of your own destiny. You don't need to give away your rights to earn your money. In fact, you'll earn more money if you don't give away your rights. Ten years ago, if you were a new artist or a new band, really the first step on the ladder was to get a record deal. Now, that's just an option that you don't have to take. Cobalt's new model may work for established artists such as Paul McCartney, Lionel Richie and Nick Cave but they are yet to break a new act into the mainstream, which is one area where the major labels have a powerful defence, their proven track record. So what Cobalt, in my opinion, offer is for artists, writers that do not need advances, that do not need um, development. That's great for the privileged few that can afford to do that. But actually, if a new writer comes along and needs developing and needs time and needs money and nurture, that's not their strongest point. We've signed artists in the past that didn't have one song that we liked that was good enough to go to market for 18 months. So we spent 18 months with them writing every day, writing with different people, meeting different people, getting them to understand what we thought took to make a record. And I think the record company can help mold and develop artists. 
Labels also provide their artists with expertise from in-house promotional, marketing and accounting teams. Services they can afford to offer thanks to their rich back catalogues stretching over 80 years of recorded music. One classic one from our catalogue. These are seven records. London Calling, classic. That's, that's one of ours on Columbia. It's quite pleasing to know that those labels that I used to watch turn around when I was a teenager in the 80s is now something that I, you know, pays my salary. That's quite exciting. Sony Music has one of the most lucrative back catalogues, generating over a billion dollars in revenue every year. I think the back catalogue is absolutely vital to our business because back catalogue creates the flow of cash that allows us to invest in new talents. That kind of equity in the brand is something that allows us to then fund our acquisition of new talent. So a catalogue is absolutely vital, always has been, and I suspect always will be. It's a virtuous circle. The funds generated by back catalogues help to build success for new artists, whose back catalogues the label will then go on to own. But there's a growing number of new artists who don't seem to need the record labels to become a star. We love you. I love you. So guys, it's Jacob. This is my entry for the Premier Sony Music Cover Competition. Jacob Whitesides was just 13 years old when he started posting videos of himself singing on YouTube. Now just 18, he's completed two American tours and his first sellout tour of Europe. Jacob was able to build his fan base himself through social media. He now has more Twitter followers than Madonna and Bruce Springsteen combined. Uh, I have 1.8 million on Twitter, 1.5 million on Facebook, 1.2 million on Instagram. The fans have just really, they're more powerful than um, most any label that you can, or any bit. They post my music, they go and find other people that are searching for new music and send them my music. People pay like hundreds of thousands of dollars to get this kind of promotion, you know. A lot of artists don't need deals, you know. If they can establish a solid touring foundation, um, they, can, they can make money, they can pay their bills. Those fans are already captured. Uh, they, they crave that freedom. And I feel like a lot of artists lose that when they jump straight to the major label. Jacob is just the latest in a new generation of emerging artists who grew up inside the digital revolution and seem increasingly skeptical of the sales pitch from the traditional labels who predated it. At Alexandra Palace in North London, some other emerging artists are preparing for their biggest ever gig supporting Faithless in front of thousands. How long have we got? Uh, tw uh, 20 plus seven. So what? normally at Half about hour. exactly an hour oh, before really? I start kind of doing this a bit. Oh, God. Oh, God. Yeah, which would normally be now, so... Elliot does this for a long time. Not too long. I don't have the stamina that used to age. <laughs> Until the ribbon breaks is one of Cobalt's latest signings. Rather than dreaming of starry-eyed celebrity, the band was drawn to the tech company's pragmatic approach. Someone like Cobalt is amazing for, like, a career-based project rather than a flash in the pan. The idea of kind of making it is, is a very different idea to the idea of having a career. It's not about thinking of this moment you think you're going to have where everything changes and you've hit some kind of plateau, I suppose. I think, I think it's just nice to... The, to be able to make music full time, you've made it. As more bands choose to control their own careers, this poses a challenge the major labels can't afford to ignore. 
I think we've had to recognize that to, to get to progress and to get to continue to have a place in the in the ecosystem of music going forward and to be able to continue doing what we do, we've needed to look, take a good, long, hard look at ourselves and kind of evolve. They're now investing in not just the artists, but also the platforms on which their music is played. Some sources claim that together, they own nearly 20% of streaming subscription service, Spotify, a stake that's estimated to be worth at least one and a half billion dollars. And they've also acknowledged that they no longer hold all the cards when dealing with talent. Part of what's happened is we've become much more service-oriented in our mentality, thinking a lot more about what specific set of needs does this particular artist require to commercialize their art. That could be the verse melody too. I mean, <coughs> it's pretty. It's pretty, dare I say, a little sexy, Jacob. Hello. That's kind of cool. After years of fierce independence, in 2015, social media star Jacob Whitesides signed a record deal with BMG under terms unthinkable even a few years ago. It's Jacob, not the label, who retains all rights to his music. I own my music. Um, I decide when I want to go on tour. There's really like no, I have 100% creative control, which was just the one thing that I wanted. And that's not a popular thing in most deals. It's not like, all right, you decide what you want to do. If I just went in with my talent alone, then they would have been able to, to craft it, the deal however they wanted to. But they saw the leverage I had, and they knew that I didn't necessarily need them, that it was more of a partner partnership type thing, so I feel like that was the most in, the, the most important thing, is just going in with something instead of nothing. We're in an age where people who nothing's to do with music can build up a profile and a business based on their opinions or their looks on social media. I don't see it as disruption. It's an opportunity, and I love that opportunity and I hope I get to share an opportunity for the rest of my working days. It's this adaptability that's kept the labels on top, a skill they need now more than ever. The major labels thought that they were more important than the artist, and they never were. And now, as the artists leave, they're clearly seeing that in the world of music, nothing is bigger than the music itself.